As we are nearing May, and with that the release of the Heavy Intercessors kit, it is the perfect opportunity to conclude our series on the Indometer Kill Team. This time we are going to focus on the aggressors and what they can do for the Death Watch. First we will take a look at their datasheet and general abilities, then we will go through how to specifically make use of them in a Death Watch army. Lastly, there will be some modeling recommendations and a quick wrap up. Welcome to Swiss Hammer, your channel for modeling in Warhammer 40k. My name is Temmer and I will be guiding you through this video. Out of the Indometer Kill team, the aggressors are easily the ones that get overlooked. No small thanks to the ongoing popularity of Inceptors and Eradicators. Aggressors are one of these units that were incredibly powerful in 8th edition, but then got reined in for 9th edition. Just how much we'll find out by taking a quick look at their datasheet. Rocking the solid gravy stats line of Toughness 5 and 3 wounds, they are somewhat comparable to Terminators. Aggressors basically have an extra toughness and an extra attack over the Terminators, but the latter have a better armor safe as well as access to a 5 plus symbol thanks to their Crux Terminators. In close combat, the aggressors' gauntlets share the same profile as the Terminators in famous Power Fists. This makes the aggressors the only Gravis unit available to the Indometer Kill team that can actually pack a punch in close combat. They can either be equipped with Flamestorm Gauntlets or Boltstorm Gauntlets and the Fragstorm Grenade Launcher, which increases their points slightly. Overall, point per point, both loadouts perform around the same. What further stands out is the absence of any special abilities, their infamous double shooting didn't make it into 9th edition. All in all, the aggressors are currently in a position where they no longer overperform, but they aren't exactly bad either. As with all units in the elite slot, they face a lot of competition in any regular Space Marine army, especially now the Terminators also have been boosted. For the Death Watch, however, the situation becomes far more interesting due to the potential inclusion of aggressors in the Indometer kill team and less competition in the elite slots due to kill teams counting as troops. For detailed information on how to build an Indometer kill team, check out my guide linked in the description. For the purposes of this video, we are going to look specifically at running aggressors in an aggressor squad versus running them in an Indometer kill team. When running them as an actual aggressor squad, aggressors are an elite choice and their regular squad size is between 3 and 6 models, including the sergeant. For this particular unit, having the extra attack is actually beneficial thanks to their power fists. What is also possible is to give the sergeant access to the artificial bolt cash relic and therefore enabling special issue ammunition on his bolt storm gauntlets. I do not recommend this however, as I don't think the ranged output on a single aggressor justifies that level of investment. If you wanted to go that route, a far better candidate would be the Inceptor Sergeant with the Assault Bolters instead. When including them in an Indometer kill team, the aggressors count as troops and therefore gain OPSEC. You can include anywhere between 1 to 5 aggressors with any loadout, meaning that you could freely mix between the Bolter and Flamer variants. They don't get access to an aggressor sergeant with the previously mentioned extra attack. As a rule of thumb, I would say that aggressors should always be taken as part of an Indometer kill team, even in case you wanted to run them as their own unit. I personally think that in order to make them worth it, they must bring something on top of their regular datasheet. In case of the Death Watch, having them gain OPSEC is one such thing. However, this comes with the default tax of 5 Heavy Intercessors. If you do not want the Heavy Intercessors, I would not take the Aggressors either. There are just too many good alternatives. But outside of running them as their own combat squad, there is also the possibility 
to keep the Indometer kill team intact and use the heavy intercessors to shield the more valuable aggressors. This is one of the standard benefits of the kill teams. A third and perhaps less obvious way is to run them as a mixed unit together with Inceptors or Eradicators, in addition to the obligatory heavy intercessors. As mentioned at the very beginning, aggressors are the only Gravis unit in an Indometer kill team with notable close combat capabilities. They also also have access to flamers, another weapon type that the rest of the Gravis units in an Indometer kill team are lacking. The idea here is to include somewhere between one and three aggressors, depending on how the rest of the kill team, as well as its role in the list, is going to look like. Thanks to the aggressor's default three attacks, plus shock assault, even a single one is going to deliver some punches. If you are including flamers, then overwatch is suddenly becoming very attractive. This adds yet another strategic layer to the Indometer kill team, outside of just using the one CP stratagem from the Inceptor to fall back and still shoot. Technically, it would also be possible to mix Boltstorm and Flamer Gauntlets, but as we are already running a minimum number of aggressors due to the limited spots in the Indometer kill team, I don't think that this is worth it. Moving on to stratagems, there is the ever popular Teleportarium. This brings them even closer to Terminators with their built-in Teleport Strike ability. This stratagem unique to the Death Watch's side. There are of course a few more popular stratagems from the Space Marine Codex that work well with aggressors, such as Transhuman Physiology, which will only cost 1 CP for a unit size of 5 or less. Another one is Unyielding in the Face of the Foe, which is available to Gravis Armor units. This also includes the Indometer Kill Team. Last but not least, I recommend magnetizing the weapons on the aggressors, as both their loadouts are currently viable. This turns out to be surprisingly easy. As illustrated on the picture, the weapon, part of the gauntlets, as well as the cables running to the backpack, can be assembled separately. The box includes separate pieces for both loadouts. The arm part is permanently attached to the model. While it is theoretically possible to just attach the weapon part of the gauntlets to the model without any glue and exchange them as needed, I prefer to secure them more firmly with the help of magnets. This is simply as an extra precaution to not have them fall off when moving the models. In order to do this, I filled the part of the gauntlet attached to the model with a bit of green stuff, then inserted the magnet and secured it with superglue. On the weapon-specific part of the gauntlet, I inserted the magnet with the help of a drill. This is no different than the standard approach for magnetizing weapons on models. Last but not least, the Fragstrom grenade launcher on top of the backpack can also be secured with the help of a magnet. This works very similar to the Cyclone Missile Launcher of the Terminators, in case you have some experience with magnetizing those. To wrap things up, while it may not seem obvious at first, aggressors can still play a major role in a Death Watch army by including them in an Indometer kill team. They are basically two different ways to do this. The first is to fill the kill team with five aggressors, then use combat squads. We now have OPSEC aggressors. While they have been reined in a bit compared to how they overperformed in 8th edition, they are still a decent unit to this day. But a separate combat squad aside, aggressors are the only Gravis unit in an Indometer kill team with notable close combat capabilities, as well as access to flamers. By including a minimum to low amount of aggressors, depending on the rest of the kill team, we can give the kill team a way to effectively deal with close combat threats. As far as stratagems go, the aggressors benefit from the ever popular picks like the Teleportarium, Transhuman Physiology or Unyielding in the Face of the Foe. Last but not least, their weapon loadouts are surprisingly simple to magnetize, with the help of some extra green stuff. So that's it for the aggressors in the Death Watch. Have you guys already dusted off yours, and how are you planning to use them now that the Indometer kill team is about to become more accessible? Let me know in the comments. And as always, thank you very much for watching guys. I hope you have been enjoying this video. Give me a thumbs up if you did, 
and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already. Thanks again and see you next time.